Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This is Each One Reach One, back for another, another one, hoping to reach one with this lesson today. What are we covering? We're talking about Israel being restored to their land. There's a whole lot going on in the Middle East, the so-called Middle East, what is really the, the Northeast of Africa. But let's just indulge their delusion for a second. The Middle East and that land over there that they call Israel. There's a lot of people waking up to the truth right now. All over social media, you can see it. People are starting to realize that these people don't match prophecy. They don't match the Israelites of the Bible and what the prophecies state about Israel in the latter days. So I felt like it was a good idea to cover through the scripture the topic of Israel being restored to their land. All right? So we're going to begin in... Ezekiel chapter 20, but let us first give all praise, honor, and all glory to our most high God, Yahweh, our father, and to our king, the beloved of the most high God, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, our Lord and master, our savior and kinsman redeemer. Peace be unto all of you that are listening. Grace, many blessings, and prosperity to the elect of the most high God. Let's get into it. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 33. <laughs> Pardon me. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. So he says, this is how he's going to reclaim his people, how he's going to recover them and bring them into their land. It's going to be with a mighty hand, with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out. All right? So he's going to make sure that there's no mistaking that it's a move of the Most High God that's taking place when he recovers his people. Nobody is going to mistake it. You're not going to be looking at, you know, these nations, what happened in 1948 and what they did in order to allow those people to come into that land over there that they now occupy. He's going to make sure that there's no discrepancy about whose hand was at work. Okay. But there's plenty of a discrepancy right now about the legitimacy of what's going on, but nobody's going to argue the, the legitimacy of Israel being in their land when the most high God places them there. Nobody's going to dare have the, the fortitude, the testicular fortitude to do such a thing. And if they do, they will be crushed because he's going to rule over his people with a mighty hand, with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out. Anybody that opposes his people when he puts them in the land, they're going to be in trouble. They're going to experience his wrath strongly. Verse 35, and I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face. Okay, so he's going to bring his people out into the wilderness where he's going to plead with them, meaning he's going to deal with his people face to face because Christ is going to Christ is going to be here at the time. This all happens after Christ returns. That's why he says, "I'm going to plead with you face to face." Israel does not go back into their land until after. Christ returns. Are we clear about that? So if that is the prophecy, who are those people in that land? Biblical Israel or counterfeits, converts? Pick your C word, right? So verse 36 like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. You see, because he's going to do the second time what he did the first time. It's going to happen in like manner. When he brings his people out from the house of bondage, a.k.a. Egypt, out of the lands of their captivities, which is his great plan for salvation in the latter days, his people will be brought out of the lands they were taken into as captives and slaves. 
So that means they should be in the lands that they were taken into as captives and slaves when Christ returns. They should not already be in their own land at the time. Are you with me? All right, let's keep it going. And so as, they, as with the first time, so will the second time be. Before going into the land, he's going to bring them into the wilderness where he's going to deal with them for a time in the wilderness. Okay? And he's going to purge out the rebels from among them in the wilderness before taking them into the land. The, the rebels of Israel will not be allowed to make it into the land as it was the first time. He had them wandering for 40 years to give the, the, the disobedient and wicked Israelites time to die off. And then he brought in the young people. Okay, that was his plan. And that is his plan again. Nothing new under the sun. He's going to do the same type of thing, except he's not going to spend 40 years doing it this time. He's going to spend three and a half years accomplishing this the second time around. All right. So when did those other people spend a three and a half year period in the wilderness before being taken into the land? And why didn't they go into the land with Christ? Christ is supposed to be the one to take them into the land because he's going to be the one ruling over them from among them with a mighty hand and with their stretched out arm and with fury poured out. Okay, verse 37. And I will cause you to pass under the rod and will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Listen, this is all before they go into the land while they're in the wilderness. I will cause you to pass under the rod and will bring you into the bond of of the covenant those people over there have not been brought into the bond of the new covenant many of them don't even believe in christ many of them you know in the and of those who do believe in them, in him they for sure have not been brought into the bond of the covenant but all of the israelites who are brought into the land are supposed to be believers in christ they're going to be believers in Christ. They're going to be following him. They're going to be people who he has uh, dealt with face to face. He pleaded with them face to face and he deemed them worthy to come into the land. There are going to be no Christ deniers in the land. There's going to be nobody saying that Christ is in hell, uh, boiling excrement. Anybody that believes that sort of thing in their hearts, they're going to be killed. You better believe that now. He's going to destroy those people. He's going to wipe them off of the map, most definitely. Or he's going to allow them to be taken into slavery where they're going to be forced into hard bondage, one or the other. Depends on, depends on how upset he's, he's going to be about it and what he thinks the punishment should be for it. Woe unto you if you fall into that category. But again, he's going to bring them into the bond of the covenant the covenant before taking them into the land of Israel. Okay, so Christ returns. He gathers his people from all the lands of their captivities. He takes them into the wilderness. He pleads with them face to face. He causes them to pass under the rod. And then he brings them into the bond of the covenant. Verse 38, and I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. So again, like I said, there's not going to be anybody who's going to have anything blasphemous to say about Christ in his land. They can't make it into the land doing such a thing. Those people don't fit the prophecy. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Okay? He says, though the trans those that transgress against him will not make it into the land of Israel. But you can look over there and you see all of these people who are wicked. Christ is not there. Right? They're the gay capital of the world. Right? Look at all of these things that's going on with these people that's not righteousness. 
It's pure wickedness and you people know it and you still are saying that those people are the people of the book. You're lying to yourselves in order to justify what you have done to the Negroes because you, you got to know that the only people that fit the circumstances the Israelites should be in at the end of days are these Negroes and your own cognitive dissonance and your own wicked hearts won't allow you to admit the truth because it's a scary idea to have to wrestle with, to come to terms with, that these people, these, this is Zion, who no man seeketh after? Hmm. Verse 39, as for you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, go ye, serve ye everyone his idols. And hereafter also, if ye will not hearken unto me, but pollute ye my holy name no more with your gifts and with your idols. For in mine holy mountain, in the mountain of the height of Israel, saith the Lord God, there shall all the house of Israel, all of them in the land, serve me. What does he say? There shall all the house of Israel, not just the southern kingdom, not just Judah, Right, not just the house of Judah, meaning Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, but all the house of Israel, meaning all 12 tribes, all of them in the land will serve him. Is that what's taking place over there in that land right now? Is everybody over there serving Christ right now with Christ dwelling in the midst of them, ruling over them? with a mighty hand, with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out? Is that what you see? You don't. So you're not seeing the fulfillment of prophecy. Who lied to you? Trace it back. Trace the lie. Think about it. Who's been lying to you? You see the visual? You see them in your head? Their face popping up? How about their names? All right. Now, guess what? Those are your enemies. Those people hate you. Those people are workers of Satan. Commissioned to lead you into the lake of fire with them. That's where you're destined to go. Because you're clinging to them. If you hold on to them, you're going to share in their fate. You better come out from among them. You better come and cling to the truth. He says, there will I accept them and there will I requ require your offerings and the first fruits of your oblations with all your holy things. And there are many people in the wicked Israelite community right now who call themselves keeping this feast day, this, that feast day, this holy day, that holy day. But he says he's not even going to recognize any of that until he brings them into their own land, which makes sense. Knowing that all of those different days, holy days were, were law um ordinances i'm sorry land law ordinances okay so let's continue i will accept you with your sweet savor when i bring you out from the people when is he going to accept them with this sweet savor savor when he brings them out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein ye have been scattered not where you um, migrated to where you have been scattered by the Most High God via slavery. The Israelites should be a people scattered throughout the entire earth through slavery. And I will be sanctified in you, Israel, before the heathen, not in the Christian church, not in the Christian believers, not in this den denomination or that one. I will be sanctified in you, Israel, before, meaning in the sight of the heathen. And ye, Israel, shall know that I am the Lord when I shall bring you, Israel, into the land of Israel. This is latter day end time prophecy. They should not be in the land right now. This prophecy has not yet been fulfilled. So anybody calling themselves Israel and in the land of Israel, 
upholding some nation of Israel, they are counterfeits. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I shall bring you into the land of Israel, into the country for the which I lifted up my hand to give it to your fathers. And there shall ye remember your ways and all your doings, wherein ye have been defiled. And ye shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for all your evils that ye have committed. They're going to loathe themselves. They're not going to further commit evils and, and wickedness and, and, and defilements. They're going to loathe themselves for, every, for all of their defilement, for all of their evils that they have committed. We, we, that we have committed. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have wrought with you for my name's sake, not according to your wicked ways. See? He's not throwing away his people because they're not perfect Christians. He says, I'm going to forgive them and I'm going to work with them and I'm going to heal them and I'm going to cleanse them. I'm going to, I'm going to gift them with what they have not deserved. See, that's why it's a gift, the most high God, because we don't deserve it. We don't deserve his forgiveness, but he's forgiven us anyway. We don't deserve his mercy, but he's given us his mercy anyway. We don't deserve his blessings. We don't deserve the kingdom, but he's given it to us anyway. And then when he does, he's going to pour his spirit upon us to make, to make sure that we never go astray again. We'll never do wickedness again. Never. When we go into the land, we will be incapable. Incapable of defiling his name again. The true Israelites should not be able to defile his holy name when they're in their land. But yet we know those people over there calling themselves Israel, they defile the name of Israel every single day. Not according to your wicked ways, nor according to your corrupt doings, O ye house of Israel, saith the Lord God. He's talking about the house of Israel. We all know house of, right, indicates bloodline, family, not a spiritual family, a family by blood, okay? Ezekiel chapter 28. Verse 25. Look, look, look what the subject says. Israel regathered, because this is the end time prophecy. It's about Israel being regathered in the latter days at the very end of all of this. It has not happened yet. Thus saith the Lord God, when I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered and shall be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen, then shall they dwell in their land that I have given to my servant Jacob. Again, what did he say? When I shall have gathered the house of Israel, when I, when he gathers his people himself, not when he sends America and Britain and some other nations to go fight a world war and, and take them and bring them into the land and, and, and oust the other people. No, no, no. He says, when I shall have gathered the house of Israel from among the people whom they are scattered, and shall be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen because Christ is going to be here with his people. Then shall they dwell in their land that I have given to my servant Jacob and they shall dwell safely therein. What is going to happen when he puts them in their land? They shall dwell safely therein and shall build houses and plant vineyards. Yea, they shall dwell with confidence. Is that what's happening now? Those people have been at war since the very day they stepped foot into that land. They have not dwelled safely. They have not dwelled with confidence. Continuing, when I have executed judgments upon all those that despise them round about them, he has, the most high God has not executed judgments upon all of the neighbors of that land over there. They're still doing their thing as normal. 
that means the prophecy has not been fulfilled. The Most High has not executed his judgments upon all those that despise them round about them. That are not the people. That's why. And they shall know that I am the Lord, their God. He's not going to do all of these things for them to justify them. Then he would make them look right, like they are the people. But no, he is showing you that they are counterfeit. He is trying to reveal to you that they do not fit the prophecies, they do not fit scripture. They are not his people. But only those who are given the Holy Spirit can see this. Everybody else is going to be blinded to the fact that the devil, Satan, that great dragon, has deceived the entire world, the whole earth. Ezekiel chapter 34. Verse 11. The restoration of Israel. Ah, oh, look at that promise. Look at the prophecies, how they all point to the very same thing. There is no deviation from what the Most High's plan is. He's making it clear. There are way too many prophecies, far too many prophecies, talking about Israel being restored in the last days, them being given the kingdom, them being the Most High's people, for there to be a such thing as replacement theology. Replacement theology is counter to the truth. So you have to know that it's the doctrine of Satan. Verse 11, for thus saith the Lord God, behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered. See, he's going to be among his sheep. When he, he, he would come and he would search out his sheep. Right? As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. The cloudy and dark day is a reference to the day of the Lord. That is talking about the time when Christ comes. The day, aka, uh, you know, because uh, a day is as a thousand years, right? The thousand year reign of Christ, the millennial reign. The day of the Lord is called the day of the Lord because it's his day. It's the Sabbath day. It's the seventh day, the day of rest for him and for Israel. The day of the Lord, the, the cloudy and dark day. He's going to be among his people. He is going to recover his people that are scattered. He's going to do it. Not any of these other nations. He's going to do it. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. He is going to do this. He's going to use the elect, 144,000, his bride, his body, right? These are the mountains of Israel that he's referring to. He's not talking about literal mountains. He's talking about his bride. Okay, I will feed them in good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. I will seek that which was lost. Israel was lost. And bring again that which was driven away. Israel was driven away and became Gentiles. And will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. And as for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I judge between cattle and cattle between the rams and the he-goats. Seemeth that a small thing unto you to have eaten up <clears throat> to have eaten up the good pasture? But ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures. And to have drunk of the deep waters, but ye must file the residue with your feet. File the residue what? The residue of his people. 
You filed the residue of his people with your feet. You trampled all over his people. You drunk of the deep waters. In scripture, the word of God, the deep waters. And have filed the residue with their feet. They filed the word. They filed his people and they filed the word of God with their feet. And as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet. The word of God. They have trodden the word of God with their feet. They give us the word after they trodden down, meaning they stepped all over. They perverted the word of God. They've corrupted it. They've lied about the scriptures. They've twisted it and mangled it and gave us their twisted, mangled, fraudulent, misunderstanding, or outright lying and corruption of the scriptures. And they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. Again, it's talking about the word of God has been fouled by the heathen. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God unto them, behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle because ye have thrust with side and with shoulder and pushed all the diseased with your horns till ye have scattered them abroad. Therefore will I save my flock and they shall no more be a prey and I will judge between cattle and cattle. His people were a people that became a prey to the other nations. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. Even my servant David, he shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. Is David in the land over there being a shepherd over the Israelites? They don't even call themselves Israelites. Why not? If they are the people of the book, why wouldn't they love their heritage so much that they would want to be called by what their forefathers were called? They call themselves Israelis. They don't even call themselves Israelites, man. That's crazy. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken it. And I will make with them a covenant of peace, and will cause the evil beasts to cease out of the land. And they shall dwell safely in the wilderness, and sleep in the woods. And I will make them, and the places round about my hill, a blessing. See, now the hill refers to the rest of Israel. The mountains of Israel refers to his bride, the elect. The hills of Israel are the rest of the Israelites, the remnant. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessings. And the tree of the field shall yield her fruit. And the earth shall yield her increase. And they shall be safe in their land and shall know that I am the Lord when I have broken the bands of their yoke. Listen, and deliver them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them, those that got rich off of their labor, those who utilize them to build up their lands, to plow their fields, right? For those who got all of their wealth and their gain off their backs. That's what he's saying. I'm going to break the bands of their yoke and deliver them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. So what does that mean? That means that before Christ returns, his people should still be in the lands of their captivities, still a people who are captive and slaves. Just slavery can look different. Get it out of your head that if it doesn't look a certain way, then slavery does not exist. Okay? We all know about the, the 13th Amendment. Right And delivered them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. That is what salvation is about. It's about Israel being saved out of the hands of those that serve themselves of them. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen. Neither shall the beasts of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely and none shall make them afraid. And I will raise up for them a plant of renown. And they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land, neither bear the shame of the heathen any more. Thus, uh, thus shall they know that I am the Lord, their God. Oh, wait, let's get that again. Thus shall they know that I, the Lord, their God, am with 
them, not with everybody. He's going to make it a point to show his people that he's with them. Who are his people? Well, let's finish the verse. Thus shall they know that I, the Lord, their God, am with them, and that they, even the house of Israel, so it couldn't be misconstrued, so Christians can't say, see, it's us, it's us, it's us, we are the people, we are his people. Even the house of Israel are my people, saith the Lord God. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men, and I am your God, saith the Lord God. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 1. Also thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel and say, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy have said against you, aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession, meaning even the elect, even the, the bride of Christ is ours in possession. Be, therefore prophesy and say, thus saith the Lord God, because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, this is what happened to his people, okay? His people have been made desolate and have been swallowed up on every side, that ye might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, and ye are taken up in the lips of talkers and are an infamy of the people. We are taken up in the lips of talkers. Everyone talks about us, the entire world. We're, we're the talk of the town, so to speak. Negatively, but we're still the talk of the, of the town. We are the people that everybody look to. Because without knowing, meaning don't even understand why, but without knowing, people understand that we are the salt of the earth. As we go, so does things move. We that's why we are the trendsetters and we set the standard and 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 different things of that nature. See, if you can get black folks on board with certain things, then you can get other people to follow. This is what they know. This is the reason why they try to take us and make us the face of certain degenerate movements. Right? Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys, to the desolate wastes, and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Therefore, so if you want to know who are the, the heathen being spoken about, well, which people took the Israelites, the Negroes, as slaves? Those are the heathens. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, surely, in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession. His land has been appointed into their possession with joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. Prophesy, therefore, concerning the land of Israel and say unto the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys. Thus saith the Lord God, behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I have lifted up mine hand. Surely the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their shame. But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel. For they are at hand to come. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and sown, because his people are his land, the land that the heathen appointed into their possession. And I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all of it, and the cities shall be inhabited, and the waste shall be builded. And I will multiply you, and I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit, and I will settle you after your old estates. And you will do better, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings, and ye shall know that I am the Lord.
Yea, I will cause men to walk upon you, even my people Israel, and they shall possess thee, and thou shalt be their inheritance, and thou shalt no more henceforth bereave them of men. Thus saith the Lord God, because they say unto you, thou land devourest up men and has bereaved thy nations, therefore thou shalt devour men no more. Neither bereave thy nations any more, saith the Lord God. Neither will I cause men to hear in thee the shame of the heathen any more. Neither shalt thou bear the reproach of the people any more. Neither shalt thou cause thy nations to fall any more, saith the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman, meaning a woman on her cycle. Therefore, wherefore, I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. He brought his fury upon his people for the blood that they shed upon the land. If he did this to the people who he calls his people, his beloved, the apple of his eye, you have to know that you other nations are going to pay for what you've done. You're going to pay for the sins of your fathers. You're going to get punished as a nation the same way Israel was punished as, as a nation and went into a worldwide captivity as a nation. And I scattered them among the heathen and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way and according to their doings. I judged them, meaning there was different levels of judgment for his people. Certain people got a more intense level of oppression and slavery than others did. He sent some into slavery into certain regions where they would get blessings, right? Where the slavery wouldn't be as hard or as bad as what others would have to go through because there are levels. The Most High, he's righteous. Even though he sent us into captivity as a nation, he still doled out um, punishment in measure. Everybody didn't get the same measure of punishment dished out to them in their captivity. Some people were sent to a place that would become more impoverished than others, like those who went to Haiti. Those who were sent to Haiti were spirits who the Most High laid sore, extremely sore strokes upon. That's why, you know, even though I have trouble sometimes believing the 12 tribes chart in its entirety, I'm not going to, you know, sit here and argue with it because, again, I don't know enough to know whether or not I could how much I can argue with it, how far I can go with the argument. But what I can say is that the people in Haiti seem to have gotten an especially um, rough ride, an especially tough captivity and judgment against them. And many believe that they make up, you know, the bulk of the, of the, the Levites, and I would have to say this, that their judgment, what Haiti went through, would lead, would lead some, some to believe that, hey, look at their judgment, man. Like if they were the priests and Levites, the priests and Levites would have been punished harder than anybody else. Because when the, the more that is expected of you, the harsher your judgment when you sin. The priests who went astray and caused the nation all of the people to go astray, it makes sense that they would have been judged more harshly than the other people because that's the most highest way. All right, but anyway, moving on. I lingered there for a bit. Moving on. Verse 20. And when they entered unto the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said to them, these are the people of the Lord and are gone forth out of his land. But I have pity for mine holy name, which the house of Israel have profaned among the heathen, whither they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. 
and I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. He shall be sanctified in his people before the eyes of the other nations. The other nations are not going to replace his people. For I will take you from among the heathen. See, you, I'm going to take Israel from among the heathen. I'm not going to replace you with the heathen. I'm going to take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. All in time prophecy hasn't happened yet. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean. When? What happened? What did he say first? I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Are those people a clean people? Does it look like Christ has sprinkled clean water upon them and made them clean from all their filthiness? No, they do not. They don't bear the record. They are not his witnesses in the earth. You do not see the proof of his word being true in those people. If you have to judge by those people, you would, you would have to believe that the, the words of the book are false, that it's all fake, phony, and made up. If you believe if those are the people, if you are using them as your time clock, if you're using them as your sign, then that will cause the words, the prophecies, not only to fail, but to be blasphemed because they cannot and will not be fulfilled in those people. And it would take a great work of Satan to convince you that they have fulfilled the prophecy. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. A new heart will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you when I put you in your land. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and will give you a heart of flesh. Do those people show the sign that they have been given a new heart and a new spirit? Are they a loving, godly people? Hmm? Clean in all their doings, in all their ways? Is that what you see? But his promise is that when he puts them in their land, he's going to cleanse them. But they're not clean. And he's not with them. And he should be. Because they're not supposed to be in the land without him. Why is Israel in the land without Christ? That's not prophecy. Verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statues. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Do you see that happening with those people? The answer is no. I'll answer for you. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And ye, Israel, shall be my people. And I will be your God, Israel. I will also save you from all your uncleanness. So before he, he puts them in the land, he's going to save them from their uncleanness. Because in these last days, his people should still be in, in sin and uncleanness. And he's going to have to save them from their uncleanness. And I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field that ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. Then shall ye remember your own evil ways. Sound familiar? When you're put in the land, then you're going to remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. That's not what they're doing. They're not loathing themselves for their iniquities and abominations. They're still reveling in their iniquities and abominations. Not for your sakes do I this, saith the Lord God, be it known unto you. Be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, in the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities. What does he say? In the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquity, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities and the waste shall be builded. They have to be cleansed first, put into the land, and then 
they shall dwell in the cities and the waste shall be builded and the desolate land shall be tilled. The land should be desolate. It's going to be in need of tilling, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. The land should be desolate right now. Before Israel goes into it, the land should be desolate. And they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden. The land is going to be so prosperous when they finally, when they are taken back into the land, the land is going to become like the Garden of Eden. It's not going to be desolate. It's not going to be a desert oasis, a desert wasteland. It's going to be like the Garden of Eden. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I, the Lord, build the ruined places and plant that that was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it and I will do it. He will accomplish his word. Thus saith the Lord God, I will set, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel, not by the Christians. I will be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. Israel should be inquiring of the Most High to do this thing. Lord, when are you going to place us in our land? When are you going to tear down our enemies? When are you going to lift us up in the sight of all the heathen and make them to know that we are your people and not forsaken? This should be our daily prayer. We should be seeking him to accomplish this daily. I will increase them with men like a flock, as the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem in her solemn feast so shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men and they shall know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse one. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of dry bones and caused me to pass by the roundabout and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And, and when I beheld, lo, the sinews and flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Remember, he said he's going to gather his people from the four winds. See, he's going to revive his people. He's going to pour his spirit upon his people and cause them to awaken. They're going to remember themselves. Right? right now, the first fruit, the 144,000 are the main ones awakening right now. But in this time, in this day, this is when the remnant of Israel is going to wake up in mass. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, son of man, look, and he said and an exceeding great army, because he's going to turn his people into a great army. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dry and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. See, as Negroes, we lost hope. Everything that we've gone through, we lost hope. We, we believe that there is no hope for us. Many believe this now. That's why many of our people live in a state of hopelessness, in a state of poverty and shame, degradation, lowliness believing that they are cut off from the most high God, that they have no favor with them, that he doesn't love them, even to the point of some becoming atheists. 
in their hurt and in their pain and in their frustrations and turmoil. Many are turned into alcohol and to drugs to escape the hopelessness and despair and horrible life. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Okay, end time prophecy. All right, this is all happening at the end. When he gathers his people, he pours his spirit upon them. He opens up their graves, calls them to come out, brings them into the land of the living because his Holy Spirit is within them. Now they are quickened. Then he brings them into the land of Israel and he shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I shall place you in your own land. I'm going to put my spirit in you and then I'm going to place you in your own land. So when Israelites are back in their own land, they should show the signs of having the spirit of the most high God in them. We should be able to look at them and say, yeah, those are the, those are the people of God for sure. Look at them. It's going to be obvious. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions, and join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Will thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and I will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, one family, one people, and they shall be one in my hand. His prophecy, his plan of salvation, it's all about bringing his family back together. His family has been split, severed, torn into many different pieces, into many different factions, into many different directions. And he's going to put his family back together again. That's what the Bible is about. All of it including the New Testament. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. And say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. Listen, he's gonna, they should be, when they brought are brought into the land, they should be one nation. All 12 tribes should be together. Judah, or the Jews as they call themselves over there, should not be in the land by themselves. It shouldn't just be Judah. It shouldn't just be Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. All 12 tribes must be in the land together. Otherwise, it is a counterfeit of prophecy. It is not the most high God's doing. He's telling you his moves. He's telling you what he's going to do so that you know when it's him and you know when there's fakery and trickery going on. And remember, scriptures say, if it were possible, they would have deceived the very elect. It is impossible to deceive the elect of God. But if you believe that those people over there are the real Israelites, you have been deceived, meaning you can't be the elect right? They shall be no more two kingdoms. The northern kingdom and the southern kingdom of Israel, they shall not be any more two kingdoms. No more be two folds. They're going to be one fold. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detestable things, right? like gay pride and pedophilia and all of these different things that they take part in. None of these things should be happening with the Israelites being in their land, nor with any of their transgressions, but I will save them 
Look at this promise, not to throw them away and gather to himself a new people that he calls spiritual Israel, but I will save them out of their dwelling places wherein they have sinned. Look, he said, I know they've sinned, but I'm going to save them out of all the places where they have sinned. He's not saying he's throwing them away because of their sin. That's Christianity's doctrine and will cleanse them. His promise is to cleanse them, not to throw them away. So shall they be my people and I will be their God. And David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant. Right? And David, my and, and my servant David shall be their prince forever. If they're in the land, David should be there with them. Christ should be there with them. This is the scripture. These are the prophecies. These are the prophecies. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, and it shall be an everlasting covenant. See, his everlasting covenant is with Israel, not with the Christian church. He makes his everlasting covenant with them. Remember, in the wilderness, he brings them into the bond of this everlasting covenant. And I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. He's going to bless his people. They're going to be nothing but blessed when they're in their land. How are those people blessed over there when they are going through constant war and turmoil? when they have one of the highest skin cancer rates in all of the world. I think they're only they're second behind the Europeans that are in Australia. My tabernacle also shall be with them, meaning the Most High God is going to dwell in the midst of Israel. He's going to set his tabernacle in the midst of his people. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know, not shall guess, not shall wonder. No, there's going to be no conjecture. The heathen are going to know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. This has not happened. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 1. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountains of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. The mountains established in the mountains? That the elect, the, the bride of Christ, shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills because the, the bride of Christ is going to be exalted above the remnant of Israel. Because they are the body of Christ. They are the, the Lamb's bride. And all nations shall flow unto it. See, all the nations will flow unto the elect. Not into the Christian church. They're going to flow unto the elect. And many people shall go and say, come ye. And let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. To the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways. And we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, not out of the Christian congregation, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. Look, he shall judge among the nations because he's going to be in the earth. When Christ puts his people in their land and, and the law goes forth from Zion and the word from the and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He's going to be among them, judging the nations, and ye shall judge, and he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords in the plowshares, because people are not going to, going to do war anymore. They're going to beat their swords in the plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come ye. And let us walk in the light of the Lord. When Christ returns with his people into the land, the other nations will practice war no more. Israel is not supposed to be in their land 
and there'd be war still going on in the earth. The two don't go together. Israel going into their land brings the end of all wars. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. You see how no matter which prophet you read from, they all are saying the same thing. All of the prophets are corroborating one another. They're supporting what the others are saying. Right? He's going to set up an ensign among the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Judah went into a worldwide slavery. When you see all of these Negroes waking up talking about that they are the true Judites, and you're calling them a cult. But the Bible says in the last days, Christ is going to assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth where they were scattered via slavery. Shame shall cover you. You're going to be in trouble for not getting this right. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Uh-oh. Are you an adversary of Judah? Are you an adversary of the Negroes? Uh-oh. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim, because the two kingdoms had a beef. They had a rivalry. They had a hatred that popped up between them. They became enemies, bitter enemies. And you saw that playing out in the New Testament. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river, and shall smite it in the seven streams, and make men go over dry shot. So the Egyptian sea should have seven streams, seven streams, all right? Go look on the map and find what is the, the biggest river, the longest river that also has seven streams, seven tributaries. This is a sign of the Egyptian seas. You gotta be able to know how to recognize things by what the Bible tells you, okay? Go locate it on the map. This is how you locate the Egyptian, the Egyptian sea, all right? This is how you find the river that he's talking about smiting in the seven streams and making men go over dry shot. And there shall be an highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Let's get Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. See his plan? The prophecy says that he's going to choose Israel. He's going to have mercy on Jacob and he's going to choose Israel. He's not going to have mercy on the Gentiles, the heathen nations, and choose the heathen nations, the Gentiles of the other nations, right? He will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them. What happens when he sets them in their own land? The strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave unto the house of Jacob. When Israel goes back into their land, the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. 
This is how it works. Your goal, if you are a Gentile, should be to cleave unto the house of Jacob so that you can be one of the strangers that are joined with them when they go back into their land. If you don't know which people are the people, you don't know who to cling to. You don't know who to love and who to lift up. That means you're being left out. You don't know who it is that you need to do right by in order to receive the blessings. That means you're not scheduled to get the blessings because there are many Gentiles out there, trust me, who know exactly who the real people of God are. And these are they who are going to be the strangers joined with Israel who will get to cling to the house of Jacob. Verse two, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place. We're going to be getting all sorts of assistance, right? With, with going to the land. And the house of Israel shall possess them. Possess them who? The strangers shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. You got to understand what your role is going to be. You got to be prepared to be servants and handmaids. It's better to be servants and handmaids to the Israelites than to be those who get hard bondage and destruction. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors because the real Israelites should be a people still suffering from oppression in the last days when Christ returns. They should still be captives. And the way, when Christ comes, he's going to flip everything upside down and the Israelites are going to turn and take their captors captive. They're going to rule over their oppressors when Christ returns. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. The Israelites should have been a people who suffered hard bondage in their captivity and are found in the lands of their captivity in the last days when Christ returns. These are the signs of how to recognize the Israelites. Right? that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, how hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. <clears throat> he who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. The mighty nation, who is the mightiest nation on the earth right now? The same nation who smote the Israelites with a continual stroke, meaning they never stopped. Because the Israelites should be a people constantly getting beat down on, constantly getting done wrong in the nation where they was taken captive. And especially in the biggest, mightiest nation that took Israelites captive. Isaiah chapter 32. Verse 13, upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars, yea, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city. Because the palaces shall be forsaken, the multitude of the city shall be left, the forts and towers shall be for dens forever, a joy of wild asses, a pasture of flocks. See, forever doesn't mean infinitely doesn't mean eternity it means for an undetermined an indefinite length of time that's what it means it means until the most high says enough is enough it's until the most high says okay now it's time to do something different that's what forever means many people don't understand that because how can forever mean for an eternity if the most high promises to make the the, the land like the garden of eden <laughs> right? When they come back into the land, it's going to be like the Garden of Eden. Right? But look, it says it shall be for dens forever. A joy of wild asses, a pasture of flocks, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. And the wilderness be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. See that? because the Israelites are taken into the wilderness before they go into the land of Israel. 
right? Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. Judgment shall dwell in the wilderness because Christ will be there separating the sheep from the goats. He's going to be judging the nations. He's going to be bringing Israel into the bond of the covenant. He's going to be cleansing them and making them ready to go into the land as a clean people. And the work of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. And my people, Israel, shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in sure dwellings and in quiet resting places. You hear this? My people, Israel, shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in sure dwellings and in quiet resting places. Is that what you see with those other people? No, it is not. So they cannot be the people. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 1. Woe to thee that spoilest, and thou wast not spoiled, and dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled. And when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee. O Lord, be gracious unto us, we have waited for thee. Be thou their arm every morning, our salvation also in the time of trouble. At the noise of the tumult, the, pe the people fled. At the lifting up of thyself, the nations were scattered. And your spoil shall be gathered like the gathering of the caterpillar, as the running to and fro of locusts shall he run upon them. The Lord is exalted, for he dwelleth on high. He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. Not all the earth, not the Christian congregation, not the Christian church. Zion and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. What's the strength of salvation? Knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge and wisdom will be the strength of salvation for the Israelites. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Behold, their valiant ones shall cry without. The ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly. The highways lie waste. The wayfaring man ceaseth. He hath broken the covenant. He hath despised the cities. He regardeth no man. The earth mourneth and languisheth. Lebanon is ashamed and hewn down. Sharon is like a wilderness, and Bashan and Carmel shake off their fruits. Now will I rise, saith the Lord. Now will I be exalted. Now will I lift up myself. Ye shall conceive chaff. Ye shall bring forth stubble. Your breath as fire shall devour you. Meaning you're going to be killed by your own mouths. Your own mouths are going to get you in trouble. And the people shall be as the burnings of lime. As storms cut up shall they be burned in the fire. Hear ye that are far off what I have done. And ye that are near. Acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness hath surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly. He that despiseth the gain of oppressions. He that despiseth the gains of oppressions. Listen, if you are a people who have benefited from slavery, if any of your relatives, your forefathers were enslavers, if they were slave masters, if you benefited in any way from the oppression of the Negroes, you were a person that gained from oppression, meaning you cannot be one of these people being spoken of. One, it says this is Zion. Right, it's specific. Says it outright. And then it goes on to talk about those among Zion. Right? It has to be those who despise the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. 
his waters shall be sure, right? His waters shall be sure. The, the word that he receives will be sure because some people are going are gonna to be receiving the word of God, but they're going to be getting the lies. They're going to be getting the twisted interpretations of the scriptures. They're not going to be getting the sure waters. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty because Christ is going to be here with his people. They shall behold the land that is very far off because Christ is going to be in the land with his people. They should not be in the land without Christ. Thine heart shall meditate terror. Where is the scribe? Where is the receiver? Where is he that counted the towers? Thou shalt not see a fierce people, a people of a deeper speech than thou canst perceive, of a stammering tongue that thou canst not understand. Look upon Zion, the city of our solemnities. Thine eyes shall see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, a tabernacle that shall not be taken down. Not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed, neither shall any of the cords thereof be broken. But there, the glorious Lord will be unto us a place of broad rivers and streams. What did he say? But there, there where? There in the land. The glorious Lord will be unto us. Why does it say that? Because the glorious Lord is going to be in the land with his people. He's going to be a place of broad rivers and streams to his people, wherein shall go no galley with oars, neither shall gallant ship pass thereby. It's letting you know it's not talking about an actual river and streams. That's figurative talk. It's figure of speech. For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. Thy tacklings are loosed. They could not well strengthen their mass. They could not spread the sail. Then is the prey of a great spoil divided. The lame take the prey. The Israelites, we are the lame right now. We are going to take the prey, meaning we're going to take the other nations as prey. And the great spoil is going to be divided. We're going to take everything from them. We're going to have to hand it all over because the entire world got rich off of the slavery of the Negroes, the Israelites. The world is going to lose its riches and everything that rightfully belongs to the Israelites will be handed over. And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. And the people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. See, when the people are in their land, they shall never be sick again. The people shall that dwell in the land, they shall be forgiven their iniquity, not forsaken, cast off and replaced with a new people called spiritual Israel. That is not Bible prophecy. That's the prophecy of Satan. Who you trust, Satan or the Most High God of the Bible? Isaiah chapter 41, verse 8. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend, thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth. Remember, he's probably kept promising to take Israel from the ends of the earth, to gather them from everywhere they were scattered throughout the earth. And called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant, I have chosen thee, and not cast thee away. As the Christian church says, Israel, I have not cast thee away. Do not believe what they said. They are liars. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen thee, yea. I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. All they that hated the Negroes, all they that hated Israel shall be, shall be ashamed and confounded. They're being confounded right now by the word. They can't understand. They're in confusion right now. They're hearing us. They're hearing these teachings, but they're in utter confusion and shame is covering them. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall perish. You better be careful about striving with the Israelites. You better be careful about striving against this Israelite awakening that you're witnessing. You better be careful about moving your tongue against the Israelites, calling them a cult. And identity thieves and whatever, whatever other negative 
words and bywords that you can come up with to disparage them, us, thou shalt seek them and shall not find them, even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. Listen to the judgment against the enemies of Israel, the enemies of the Negroes. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm, Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make thee, Israel, a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. I'm going to make you a mighty strong people. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills as chaff. We're going to be given spiritual powers. We're, we're going to become like mighty men, like superheroes. We're going to be like something fresh out of the comic books, out of a Marvel movie. But, you know, the, the good ones, <laughs> the good ones, right? Thou shalt fan them and the wind shall carry them away and the whirlwind shall scatter them and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel. When the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them, will not forsake them. We got that? All right, let's get Jeremiah chapter 31. Verse one, Israel's mourning turned into joy. Why? Because Israel will be in a state of mourning until Christ returns. Verse one, at the same time, saith the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel and they shall be my people. Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness. This is that wilderness even Israel, so you know which people he's talking about, finding grace in the wilderness, the Israelites. When I went to cause him to rest, right? Cause him to rest, meaning this is the time when Christ returns. This is how you know. He's talking about that time and not a time already passed because he says when I went to cause him to rest. The day of the Lord, when Christ returns, that's the time of rest for the Israelites. That has not come yet. So you know this is a future prophecy that has not been fulfilled, okay? The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tabrets and shall go forth in the dances of them that make merry. Look at what he says he's going to do to his people in the end. No, no prophecy of throwing them away, only promises of healing his people. Thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall eat them as common things. For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the mount of Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye! And let us go up to Zion, unto the Lord our God. Right? The northern kingdom Israelites are going to come and join their brethren of Judah, the house of Judah. For thus saith the Lord, sing with gladness for Jacob and shout among the chief of the nations. Publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Lord, save thy people. Who? the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country. End time prophecy. What he said he's going to do. I'm going to bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth and with them the blind and the lame, the woman with child and her that travaileth with child together. A great company shall return thither. 
They shall come with weeping and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble. He's going to lead them in a way that they shall not stumble. For I am the father, I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, he that scattereth Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. You see what he says to say? If, you're, if your church is not saying this, if, if your church is saying that he threw away Israel and replaced them with the Gentiles, they're anti-God, they're anti-Christ. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it. This is what you're supposed to say. He that scattered Israel will gather Israel and keep Israel as the shepherd does his flock. This is what you're supposed to say. Anything to the contrary is the talk of devils. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. His people Israel, the real Israelites, should be a people so low and so weak and powerless that they should still be in the hands of people that are stronger than them. There should be no might in their hands against another people who are up above them, oppressing them, keeping their feet and their knees on their necks. What people does this sound like? What people comes to mind? Let your mind wander. Ponder it. Therefore, they shall come and sing in the height of Zion and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord for wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and of the herd. And their souls shall be as a watered garden and they shall not sorrow any more at all. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance both young men and old together. For I will turn their mourning into joy and will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrow. Listen to the great comforting words and, and, and the hope of salvation and restoration that's a pronounced for Israel. And I will satiate the soul of the priests with fatness and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rahel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. Thus saith the Lord, refrain thy voice from weeping and thine eyes from tears, for thy work shall be rewarded, saith the Lord, and they shall come again from the land of the enemy. In the last days, the Israelites should be in the land of their enemies, not in their own land, in the land of their enemies. The whole plan of salvation is for the Israelites to be saved from the hands and the lands of their enemies. And there is hope in thine end, saith the Lord, that thy children shall come again to their own border. I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus. Thou hast chastised me, and I was chastised as a bullock, unaccustomed to the yoke. Turn thou me, and I shall be turned, for thou art the Lord my God. Surely after that I was turned, I repented, and after that I was instructed. I smote upon my thigh. I was ashamed, yea, even confounded because I did bear the reproach of my youth. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For since I spake against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, saith the Lord. These are the Israelites who were cast off and became Gentiles. Set thee up way marks, make thee high heaps, Set thine heart toward the highway, even the way which thou wentest. Turn again, O virgin of Israel. Turn again to these thy cities. How long wilt thou go about 
O thou backsliding daughter, for the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as yet they shall use this speech in the land of Judah and in the cities thereof, when I shall bring again their captivity, meaning when I shall end their captivity. The Lord bless thee, O habitation of justice and mountain of holiness. This is what the people are going to say about Judah when he brings them out of their captivity. The Lord bless thee, Judah, O habitation of justice and mountain of holiness. And there shall dwell in Judah itself and in all the cities thereof together, husbandmen, and they that go forth with flocks. For I have satiated the weary soul, and I have replenished every sorrowful soul. Upon this I awaked and beheld, and my sleep was sweet unto me. Those words are sweet unto me. And if you are an Israelite listening to this, these words should be sweet unto you also. If you are at odds with the word of God, woe unto you. May these words be bitterness in your stomach and foul to your taste buds. But may the truth satiate your soul. Amos chapter 9, verse 11. The restoration of Israel, yet another prophet. And the consistent theme, Israel being restored. In that day, will I raise up the tabernacle of David. What day is that? The day when Israel is taken back into their land. In that day, will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name. Listen, listen. He said the real Israelites are going to be raised up, repaired, and, and that the cities and ruins will be built as in the days of old, and the Israelites are going to possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen which are called by my name. Who are the heathen that are called by his name? Well, who are the people calling themselves Israel, but are not Israel? Hmm. Sounds like the same people who call themselves Jews, but are not, but do lie, but are the synagogue of Satan. Sounds familiar? Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed. And the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. See, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper. The plowman, the Israelites, those who plowed the fields, those who were the laborers, shall overtake those who reap the benefits of the plowman. Right? And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, meaning I will bring them out of captivity, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. And they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. Why is this been made a point of? Because his people, up until the time of Christ, his people were a low people who went through a period of slavery and captivity where they had to build up the cities of the other people, where they planted vineyards but couldn't drink the wine thereof. They made gardens, but couldn't eat the fruit of them, right? And I will plant them upon their land, Israel. I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. That is his promise to you, Israel. Once he puts you back in your land, that's it. You're never going to be at odds with the Most High God again. You're never going to have a fallout with him again. You're never going to sin or transgress again. You will never be brought out of your land ever again. Nobody will ever be able to make you afraid. You will be at rest. You will dwell in safety. That is your promise that you will be brought back into your land. 
true biblical Israel is waiting on Christ to come to save them and take them into their land. There should be no Israel in their own land right now. That is completely contrary to the scriptures, as you have seen. I pray that you were edified by this to God, the Most High Yahweh, and to the beloved of the Most High God, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, Christ, the anointed of the Father, our Master, Savior, and Redeemer, it belongs all the glory. And may their many blessings be upon the elect, the saints, the remnant of Israel, and to the Gentiles that will love us and cling to us, the strangers that will be joined to us, who will serve us in righteousness. Peace be unto you. Shalom. Oh yeah, and pay forward. Each one, reach one.